Hey you! Yeah, that's right. You right there. Get up off that chair or couch or toilet or whatever you're sitting on. Start moving those feet. Because on this episode of the Chip Tide Show, we're going to be playing some games, having some fun, and getting into mad shape while we're at it. Let's be honest. Super Mario Party is easily the best game in the whole franchise. My assistant Richard disagrees with me saying, Oh, there's only four boards. But let's be honest. Nobody's playing Mario Party for the party mode. No, no, no. We are here for those sweet, sweet rhythm mini games. In this workout video, we're going to be counting down the top 10 best rhythm mini games in Super Mario Party. And if you follow along, I can guarantee you'll burn at least 50,000 calories by the end of this. It's science, just trust me. Don't look it up. So, without further ado, let's get the groove on. first boot up your Super Mario Party Rhythm Mode, you're going to see three options. Easy is for all you beginners out there, hard is for the more experienced groove junkies, and then Remix is for everyone who isn't objectively a terrible person. Of course, I'm going to be going with the Remix Mode, but if you don't care about the love and respect of all your peers, then feel free to pick one of the other two. Now I know the title of the video says Top 10 Rhythm Minigames, but that was only because my producer Richard thought it'd be easier to market that way. But I'm actually going to call an audible here and change it to the top 9 rhythm mini games. Why you ask? Well, there's only 10 rhythm games in the whole mode, and I would rather be caught dead than say that Strike It Rich is the best at anything. It's such a shame because it seems so promising. Jumping in time with the most iconic song in the franchise and doing what Mario does best? What could go wrong? A lot apparently. These games and this exercise program is all about getting into the groove of the song, letting the beat work its way into your very soul and burn all those calories from within. That's not the case here. There's a slight delay between when you jump and when you hit the block, so if you want to hit the block on beat, you have to jump a tiny bit before the beat in the song, and that's a big no-no. If a rhythm master like myself can't reliably hit on beat, that's the sign of a bad game right there. Remember kids, if you're bad at something, always blame the game. For that reason, I'm not even going to talk about this game or just make it in the top 9. Simple as that, I would never do this game the service of giving it its own whole segment in a video. Wait. Alright, so coming in at the bottom of our best rhythm games list is Wiped Room. This one's pretty straightforward, nice and simple one to get us all warmed up. Let's get in the right headspace here. You're a window washer, washing the side of a skyscraper. Somebody's already put the soap on the window somehow, so you just gotta wipe it off. But make sure you stay on beat, cause this lift ain't stopping for anyone. You're a window washer for Christ's sake, you got places to be, windows to wash, we can't have you stopping to clean every little window. <gasps> so like I said, a nice, easy, calm one to start us off. Just listen to that nice song, wipe the soap to the beat, and just go crazy at the end, and you'll do just fine. Even on the remix round, it's pretty simple. He could say it's simple and clean. <sighs> that's, a, that's a Kingdom Hearts reference for y'all. Doesn't really apply here, I guess. Alright, now that we're nice and warmed up, it's time for some cardio. I hope you guys are a big fan of the 2-4 time signature, because we're going marching. Baton and On is another pretty simple game, coming in at number 9 in our program. In this one, you're in a marching band. Well, well except there's no actual band, so uh, it's just a bunch of people marching in a circle. Still pretty cool, I guess. But... You're not just marching in time with this one. Oh, no, no, no. Sometimes you have to stop in time, too. Now you're probably thinking, well, this isn't so bad. But be wary, because this is easily the longest game of all of them. Or at least it feels like it. But uh, it's still pretty fun, I guess. Look, 
if I'm being honest, this one probably should come in at number 9, except for the fact that you're marching in front of a bunch of toads and being led by the absolute legend that is Toadette. So you know what, I take it back. This is number 1. Rhythm and Brews. Alright, now that we're nice and warmed up, it's time to get into the fun stuff. This one's classic whack-a-mole. You wait for the mole to pop up, and you smack it in the head with a hammer. Seems like this game is all about reflexes, but if you wait for the mole to pop up before you swing, you'll miss it for sure. You gotta feel the groove. Let it flow through you. Know when the mole is going to pop out before even it does if you want to succeed. Ignore the clearly distressed look on Monty Mole's face as he's forced to concuss his brethren over and over again. Ah, uh, he loves it. In fact, he's so excited to play that he keeps jumping the gun and hitting it early when I know I'm hitting it on beat. Come on, Monty Mole, get your head in the game. Oh, uh, uh, bad choice of words there. The best part about this game is the last mole, which comes rocketing at you, screaming, come on, do your worst. It's pretty hard to get it on normal mode, not to mention the remix, but if you become one with the hammer and manage to nail it, whoa! Alright. We're four games deep into this workout program, so hopefully by this point, your blood is pumping, you're feeling that energy, and you're ready to let it show. If not, you better get with the program, because we're going to a pep rally. In this game, you can live out your wildest fantasy of being one of those jerks at a sporting event who brings a massive sign and blocks the view of people four rows behind them. Oh, if this is anything like the high school pep rallies I've been to, they're not missing much. By this point, hopefully you've gotten pretty good at feeling the groove, so you should have no trouble coordinating your sign movements here. That is, unless the people next to you blow it every single time and mess up my rhythm, Peach, so help me God, I will smack you with this sign if you don't start pulling your weight. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, that goes for you too. How are the people going to feel the pep if we can't even lift signs to the beat of a song? <sighs> at least the toads never let me down. Look at them. They're like a well-oiled machine. All right, folks, we've reached the top five. Now, I'm sure you've worked up quite a sweat at this point, but this next game, I promise, is going to burn away those calories like magic. Really, it's just physics, but uh, it's clear on the table. It's the classic trick of pulling the tablecloth out from under the fancy dishes and everything is left standing. Some invisible ghost or something stacks up the glasses, and you gotta do your best not to knock them down. If you yank the cloth at the right time with the beat, you'll be just fine. Mistime it though, and let's just say you can expect a haunting in the near future. Pretty sure that's not how this trick actually works in real life, but eh, it's fun. In practice, this game is basically the same as Rhythm and Brews, but it's higher most because I like the song better, deal with it. Also, these two games are quite different in how they end. Instead of a lightning quick mole, it slows way down with two big thwomps. You must have patience, young Padawan. Unlearn what you have learned. Feel the groove flowing through you. It surrounds us and binds us. Groovinous beings are we, not this crude matter. Remember that? And you'll do just fine. Oh, son of a... Alright, we've passed the halfway mark of this workout, so now we're getting into the real good stuff. Coming in at number four, we've got... All-Star Swing. Before you say it, yes. The only reason I like this one as much as I do is because it reminds me of Mario Super Sluggers. Sadly, you can't play as Purple Toad, but hey, I'll take what I can get. This game seems like a simple call and response. They throw the ball, you wait a measure, and then you hit the ball. But things start to get crazy when they throw fastballs into the mix, especially on remix mode. At times, you only have a fraction of a second to react, and your eyes, ears, arms, and soul all have to be working in perfect sync to ensure maximum bangers are hit. And I wouldn't have it any other way. D 
Do you like fruit? Yeah. Yeah, it's good for you. Got some nice natural sugars in it. And no! No, you do not like fruit. Because starting off our top three is take a stab. Yeah! This game is pretty similar to the last one, except instead of baseballs, it's fruit, and instead of bats, it's swords. Which, let's be real, if you play baseball any other way, you're wrong. I'm ranking this one a bit higher than All-Star Swing because I like the beachy aesthetic and song a little more, and also, I'm really freaking good at it. I can skewer fruit on beat like no tomorrow. Don't let anyone tell you I can't. In fact, if there's one thing you take away from this workout program, it's that fruit is terrible, and if you ever see some, you should grab the nearest sword or spear or sharp object and skewer that sucker to the beat of whatever song happens to be playing. Richard, play that intro again. Need I say more? Sure, when you boil it down, Fiddler on the Hoof is basically the same as Wiped Room, just swap out soap for horses. So what is it about this one that ranks it so much higher than that one? Well, I'll be honest, it's about 90% thanks to that intro. Richard, go ahead and play it again. But also, while a majority of the game plays exactly the same as Wiped Room, the ending few seconds is really what makes this one for me. Instead of a line of soap where you can just flail your arm around as fast as you can and get it all, this time, they hit you with a series of rapid fire circles and you have to hit them all on beat. It's hard enough in normal mode, but when it comes to the remix, if you're even a fraction of a second off on the first one, game over. Thanks for playing. But on that rare occasion where you do manage to nail every single one, unreal. I don't have any footage of it because I wasn't able to pull it off while recording, but to be honest, the video doesn't do it justice. It's just something you gotta experience for yourself. And on that note, Richard, hit that intro again. Yeah, you all saw this one coming. Sure, it's by far the easiest game. Waluigi's up on stage, he strikes a pose, you wait your turn, you do the same thing. But what can I say? It's just the best. Now granted, I'm not one of those people who's totally all in on the Waluigi train. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still there. I'm just like, maybe on the caboose or something. Do you know why I'm on the caboose? Because I was sprinting to catch the train before it left the station after playing this masterpiece. Time to Shine is Waluigi's magnum opus. It's beautifully simplistic, which is another way of saying it's stupidly easy, but I don't care. Waluigi strikes a pose, you wait your turn, and then do your best to match his ungodly talent. I think the devs knew they couldn't expect us to live up to the perfect specimen that is this dancing machine, so it doesn't actually matter what pose you strike, but let's be real, you do the poses. And to accompany this brilliance of a game is the single greatest piece of music ever penned. Truly, this is the perfect game. But be weary, humanity was never meant to be exposed to this much groove. And if you're not careful, you might lose yourself in it for good. Well, hope you all enjoyed this installment of the Chip Tides Burning Nine. I'm gonna keep the groove going and dance us out but I'll see you all next week, same time, same channel. All right, keep it going, Waluigi.